Good afternoon. My name is Barb Malera. I'm a member of the team at Harvesting History. Harvesting History is an American horticultural company that specializes in heirloom varieties. Heirloom variety seeds, roots, sets, flowers, and bulbs. Today we're going to be talking about planting tomatoes in containers. And we're going to start off with Tomatoes 101, which is the size of the pot. Now, this is the size pot you want to plant one, did you hear me? One tomato in. It's an 18 inch diameter pot. The depth can vary from, in this case, it's about 14 inches. It can be 16 inches, 20 inches. It doesn't matter as long as it's at least 12 inches deep. The diameter needs to be 18 inches in diameter for one plant. Now, I know I can just feel it that there's some Millennials that are watching this video. Now, my dear Millennials, no, you cannot plant one tomato here and one tomato there because you will get less productivity from those two plants than you would if you were to plant one tomato plant right here. So one tomato plant per 18 inch container. Now that we have that resolved, let's talk a little bit about soil. There's uh, a lot of controversy about soil and um, what I would like to say is that the reason that I can speak with such authority on planting things in containers is that over the course of 14 years we have been working on a research project in which we planted 100 containers three times a year. We now have over 42 hundred plantings under our belt and so we feel we have a fair amount of experience and the prejudices we've developed from that experience are what I intend to share with you today and in other videos about planting in containers. So what kind of soil do you put in containers? You do not need to use the fancy soils that are now available in the marketplace. What we have used for at least the last 10 years is crummy backyard soil crummy backyard soil with beautiful compost this is actually compost from my compost bin look at this and then peat moss Now, the recipe is 60% crummy backyard soil, 20% peat moss, and 20% compost. Now, if you live in the city and you don't have any crummy backyard soil, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy what they call their topsoil. It's their least expensive soil, and you can use that in place of crummy backyard soil. If you do not have a source for your own compost, then also purchase dehydrated cow manure, and that will work as well as the compost. The crummy backyard soil provides you with the soil and some nutrients. The peat moss provides you with a lot of organic matter, and the compost provides you with organic matter, but also it's a source of great, great micronutrients. So this soil recipe is a wonderful recipe. It, it supplies organic matter, micronutrients, nutrients, and soil. If you have heavy clay soil, that's okay. Just break up the clay from your crummy backyard clay soil and mix it with the peat moss and with the compost or mix it with the dehydrated cow manure and that will still make a very, very good soil mix for your container. Fill your container so that you have two to three inches before the soil hits the top of the container. Okay, next step, and this largely applies to gardeners who live east of the Mississippi and in particular in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast where we've had an ongoing problem since 2008 with blight. 
with what is known as fungal blight. It comes in early blight, mid-season blight, and late blight. If you live in those areas, whether you have a problem with blight currently, you will eventually have a problem with blight. And so what we suggest is from the very beginning, you are proactive when it comes to blight. So what you want to do is use this wonderful product. It is manufactured by Bonide, that's B-O-N-I-D-E, and it is copper fungicide, and it is the powder form, not the spray form, the powder form. And what you're going to do with this copper fungicide, which by the way is approved for organic gardening, what you're going to do with this is you're going to dust gently the surface of your soil, the soil in your container. Then you don't really need to work it in because it's going to be worked in because you're going to dig a hole in the middle of the container for your tomato plant. You want to dig your hole up so that it buries the plant up to the last four to six leaves. And see, as I dig this hole, I'm working the copper fungicide into the soil. So you then take your tomato plant and you twist. You don't cut. You twist off the bottom leaves and we now have four leaves remaining. And the we will bury the plant up to here. Okay. So I now have my little plant happily in its pot, one plant to an 18 inch diameter pot. I have buried it up to those last four leaves. And now I have one final thing to do. And that is to feed it some calcium. This is bone meal. It is a source of calcium. There are other sources of calcium that you can also use if you don't want to use bone meal. So what I will do is I will ring this baby plant with about a quarter of a cup of bone meal. Now you're saying, well, why is she doing that? Because most tomato plants are susceptible to something called blossom end rot. It occurs in a way that causes the fruit, the tomato itself, to turn brown on the blossom end. It is a calcium deficiency and it can be easily remedied with calcium, bone meal or another source. So again, to be proactive, as you are with the blight situation, you want to wring this plant with bone meal on the very day that you plant it. And then two weeks after that, you want to apply a second ring. And two weeks after that, you want to apply a third ring. It's very important that you do multiple applications of bone meal because it's in a container and all the nutrients eventually make their way out of the container through the holes in the bottom. So that's why you need multiple applications. On the weeks that you are not feeding the plant bone meal, so every two weeks, you are going to feed this little tomato plant tomato food. I highly recommend Espoma, that's the manufacturer, it's E-S-P-O-M-A, Espoma Tomato Tone. And I use it on my peppers, and I use it on my eggplants, and don't tell anybody, but I also use it on my squash and my melons. But I love this product, and this is what I use on my tomatoes. Just follow the directions on the bag, and if the directions aren't clear, then again, just use about a quarter of a cup ringed around the tomato plant every two weeks, and you want to do that for at least six applications until the plant is well into maturing fruit. If you follow these simple directions, 
you will have magnificent tomatoes that are grown in a container. And a tomato plant in a container can produce as many tomatoes as one that is grown in the soil if you remember to fertilize and treat it with bone meal. I wish you the very best luck with your tomatoes this year, especially those ones that you're growing in containers. It's a very rewarding experience. And I encourage you to take a look at our website, which is www.harvesting-history.com. We have one of the largest selections of heirloom tomato seed varieties of any company in the United States. So please come and visit us. And in the meantime, take really good care of these little guys. They're your responsibility now. And they'll love you and produce for you if you take care of them. Good luck.